I'm ready to be let loose and make these 40 large family freezer meals. Welcome back again today, friends. You will not believe what today is. I know, I am so excited. We are doing a massive large family freezer cooking day. Oh yes, we are. We're gonna do 40 meals and we're gonna do it in one day. I am going to do all the prep for those meals. I basically, I need to go grocery shopping in the grocery store in my basement and I need to get meat defrosting, maybe some meat cooking. I've gotta look at my big batch cooking guide and my freezer meal pack. I also have about 40 pounds of pears that are ready to be canned, so we're gonna be spinning that. I'm gonna be pulling all of this together and doing all of this large family freezer meal prep and then tomorrow I will be cooking all 40 meals and actually it's about 8 30 now at night but you know a busy mama day this is my time to now pull some things together I'm not assembling the meals tonight that's gonna be a whole other rodeo but I am going to get these pears done though the pears does not relate to freezer cooking but the pears are peeled and chopped and ready to go so I'm gonna deal with those we're gonna get a big shopping bag. I'm going to take my grocery list that is included in my large family freezer meal pack 15, which is 40 casserole dinners. I'm gonna take that grocery list with us and we are going to shop everything that I currently have. And then what I don't have, we'll put in a little Walmart grocery pickup order and I'm picking that up tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Yes and amen, stick with me, it's all gonna work out, I promise. So, we're gonna finish up some canning stuff here that needs to be dealt with. I'm gonna get the pears going and the light syrup. Then we're going shopping. I should stop talking and we should just jump into things, but at least you know what's coming. So this is a canning project that you were just helping me with. We're just wrapping this up where I did 48 quarts of homemade applesauce and another 14 quarts of these canned pears. I'm getting ready to do another 14 quarts, so we will be ending the pears at this time with 28 quarts. I have much of this labeled. I need to go through and I'm gonna label the rest of this. And I have some empty ball boxes here and I'm gonna have some happy helpers help me start to get this canning project downstairs. We're also, I need to do things like pack up some of my other canners, we're gonna leave the roasters out. I have to psychoanalyze my cooking guide there. I might need those. Um, but anyway, we're gonna clean up the canning for now and switch to freezer cooking.
been working on this countertop, getting canning things put away, except for what I need to finish these jars tonight. What did we, so many things, bowls, odds and ends, canning salt, I'm going to probably put my extra rings, made, well I have, I'm like, why are those rings there? I have extra, I have rings set out for the project I'm currently doing, but I put the rest of them away in a crock that I have. And so I've got these jars warmed up. I'm going to get my first round of my pears going. And that shot. Okay. Get another dipper. Pretty good system with this last night. I'm trying to remember what that was now this evening. I'm like, how did I do this last night? I had, you know, the perfect tools. I know I need my funnel. But everything is how I needed it, and now today is another jet. Okay. I also do have a jar holder. I just prefer to hold them in a towel. want to watch back over last night's canning footage. Let's see, I think I had these sitting on a cutting board when I filled them with the liquid. That sounds about right. Slow down with those pears, Jam Brown. I'm just adding our liquid in. I'm still doing the recipe. Well, it just, it calls for any style syrup, meaning very light, light, it goes all the way up to extra heavy, breaks down by the sugar content. It also says you can use apple juice or just water. So I'm just doing a very light syrup. I was also reading about using honey. Very light syrup water that I'm putting on these, but please leave me your pear recommendations in the comments below, yay. Coming up, I have five large pans in the freeze dryer that need to come out, more of our peppers of 2022 that we've been working through, the, what do we say, 100 pounds of peppers or more. Uh, we filled all three of these 30 quart bowls, oh it's heaping high, so Five more pans are coming out, and then I have more peppers that, well actually, once I get those peppers out tonight, and we'll probably just put those in jars as well, I will probably go ahead and run a defrost cycle. And then after that, we will finally shop in my grocery store in my basement, haha. -ha. I'm pretty sure I have most of the meat. I was looking at my freezer cooking grocery list for large family freezer meal pack 15. One of the things on there is also a diced ham, so I'm gonna see what I have. I like getting that those little diced ham packs where the ham's just already cubed. It's really convenient. Pretty sure I should have most of the chicken. It only calls for 13 pounds of ground beef in this pack. So I know I have that. I know there's some things on the list such as fresh asparagus. I don't I don't have that, so that's on my grocery order for tomorrow. Needed two packs of frozen meatballs. I might have those, I might not. So we'll go through, we'll shop, we'll see what we need. We'll put it in the Walmart list. Might get some of that meat cooking overnight if I can. When I get 
get a little excited with my pot filler. So far, my mixer bowl helps me get out of trouble. to see it three quarters of the way picked up for just a few of those, right? So, all three of these cabinets over here are pretty much becoming canning cabinets, which I'm not mad about. I mean, I'm here for it. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, we are all about it. And I put my digital pressure canners up for now, too. Just, again, giving us freezer cooking room for the weekend. You will not believe, you will not believe, if I told you who was coming to my house, not in this video, but in a few days, someone is coming to my house to visit, and you're gonna know, you're gonna know, and you're gonna be like, I can't believe in the YouTube universe that this just happened. Let me know in the comments below who you think is coming to visit me and the Mega Mama Kitchen and the Baby Pigs and all, all the fun happening around here in just a few days. We're not doing like a big collab video or anything, but we are visiting. Okay, I'm almost telling you. I best be quiet. I'm so excited. And I will also say, okay, after this, I will also say it's not any of my wonderful friends that are also full-time YouTubers that I went to Florida with in June. So that's a list of my favorite ladies. So this is someone else who's also my favorite. Okay. Continue, Jim Roth. Continue. I'm going to need some more minutes here. I have other jars boiling. I'm just going to act like I'm not excited thinking this thought that I really want to tell you that I'm really excited about. I shall not mention it again. Let me know in the comments below who you think is coming to my house and this will be fun. It'll be fun, we're gonna have fun. I'm taking this cutting board and I'm dumping it into a big crock, which I wanna do sauerkraut, but for now the crock can hold the rings. I will say that these roasters, both of them, have been in this farm cabinet. But what I think is going to happen is, I mean, you know how this works. I'm always going to have some sort of big cooking project going on. I'm going to do freezer meals. I'll be working on sheet pan dinner recipe videos. You know, lots happening. And because I love, 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 I pledge allegiance to the Presto digital pressure canner equal to as much as I pledge allegiance to Sharp Shopper and John Henry General Store, yes and amen. I think, I think it's very probable that I will either have my digital pressure canners out here doing something or the roaster ovens out doing something and I'll just switch them back and forth with the space. I think that could be a thing. We shall see how this goes. Okay, so this, I'll probably need this tomorrow. I'm leaving my whiteboard out because we'll make our list in the morning. Okay, and then I have rings over there, so I'll put these rings up. Uh, 
And then I have my electric knife that I use for doing that corn right there. But I'm gonna put that in my corner cabinet. I've been putting a lot of my sharp tools up there, like, you know, the pineapple cutter and the cantaloupe cutter and various things like that. The can openers are up there. And this I'll use for something. This towel has been out here helping me for a few days, so that's gonna go to my, in case I have a spill tonight pile. Okay, I think my pears are finally boiling, so I'm gonna set my timer. All of my canning resources say pears 25 minutes. in my head, but also whenever I get the air bubbles out, that very well could change the headspace too. So I'm just gonna do this because I'm doing it, but then I'll get air bubbles out and then we'll truth will tell. shot for my wrist for a minute. I'm okay. I'm okay. I know you worry. It's okay. I tell my kids that's what pain is for. Pain receptors are saying, hey, don't do that. You're going to get hurt. And then you jump back real quick. You're not hurt as bad as you could be. Okay. So with water bath canning, everything I've read says it needs one to two inches above the jars but at least one inch. Okay, I still think this is like three inches over, so I'm just gonna take out some more water. Otherwise it bubbles over, or spits a lot. The gas stove doesn't like that. So what I've read, hi there. It's, it's getting later, we're doing it though. We're gonna, we're gonna end this night with the Walmart grocery pickup order done for the morning and having shopped downstairs. I got some splatters on my tile, we'll get off later. Um, having shopped downstairs for these freezer meals. Freezer meals really are coming, but I can't start one project until I finish another. So I can use my good old Presto pressure canners without the weight. What I've noticed with my canner is uh, it still builds up pressure. So this pressure little pop thing comes up. My pressure gauge still reads pressure. So I wait for all that to go down before I open it. It doesn't take as long as when I'm pressure canning. But anyway, little things I notice. And I haven't yet mastered taking this rack up and down. So I've just been using my jar lifter. 
I don't know what the deal is with that. You can let me know. I guess that's just for putting things down. I've used other pots and such for water bath canning, so I do know it protects things from the bottom of the pot too. I did forget to put my vinegar in. You would think I might need a sign for the stove. Jamarel, put your vinegar in your canner. And I'm gonna put the other seven when they come out over here on this board. This board has been so useful for so many kitchen projects. And I did get some food grade mineral oil. I need to rub that over my, um, my cutting boards and my wooden spoons. Even Amelia was like, mommy, what about that oil you got? So it'll be another upcoming project. I'll just say it for the next couple videos and we'll get it done. I didn't tell you all what we did for dinner. I had one enchilada casserole freezer meal left in the freezer. So did that. Oh, and I didn't finish my sentence. I also had, um, as I think I've mentioned, I'm working through finishing up the last of the slow cooker freezer meals we also had in the freezer. I had a bag of vegetable soup. So I put that in the slow cooker earlier today and just how it goes. And with only one nine by 13 pan and 11, well actually 11, 12, 13 people to feed, we had that, but then we also had vegetable soup options. And some people just naturally wanted one or the other and it all worked out. Wash the bowls hide parts. Ha ha, ha ha, country mama humor. So now we have all three of the mega mama bowls ready to go. Two of these are still being broken. They don't know what a big super mega freezer cooking day is. But they're about to find out. They've been learning all about canning and preserving, so that's good. I don't want to tell you what time it is. I'm kind of scared. Will you still be my friend? 12.07. 1207 is a brand new day. Oh well, yes it is, but I will get seven to eight hours sleep <laughs> before the brand new day. We did not have a pig or anything wild happen this season. It's been a long evening. Well, remind myself. Sometimes I'm like, why am I not done yet? Well I didn't get started till about 8.30 or so. So there we go. And we did 40 pounds of pears and kinds of stuff. So then we clean it up, found our island again, got getting ready for a freezer cooking day. So now I think I can sit down and go over my list and get ready. I think I got this washcloth this evening. I'm fine using it something for you know a day. So I think I got this this evening. It'll be okay. And I'm still gonna need a cloth to wipe up with. All right, so again, I'm just gonna leave my towel pile there. Again, I'm only thinking, you know, a spill or something. I, You know how things go in the kitchen. Timer's going off, so we're gonna turn this pot off. All right, I have been sitting here working on my Walmart list. Still have not gone downstairs, because obviously it's late, I thought. I'm just gonna sit down. But I'm going through making my order based on what I know I have. We'll go down and check and confirm that though. We are gonna put the kitchen 
to bed for tonight or this morning. Yes, we are. I just pulled the other seven quarts of pears out. I still have not gone downstairs to my freezers, but at this point, again, I've taken, I've gone through my mental inventory because I had a nice long time sitting down, got my Walmart list on my phone over there, turned in for Walmart grocery pickup in the morning. And if I don't get it, Travis will get it for me. And we are gonna say good night to this nice tidy kitchen tonight yes we are and dishes were done earlier this evening so that's what's happened between now and then but both dishwashers are full of clean dishes and again I'm just proud of us so in the morning we will go take the meat out of the freezer I'll just have to do some cold water defrost method and get going get going because I'm not doing nothing with no meat tonight haha ha. but we're good once I went through that list we really didn't need besides the meat I have some things in the freezers down there so I didn't have to get everything on the list but I'll show you my haul in the morning so we're just gonna we're gonna turn the turn the lights off for tonight we're gonna say good night kitchen and I'll see you in seven to eight hours and we will get this party started. It's gonna be a fun and busy morning. Good morning, friends. Lots going on here. Yes and amen. This is gonna be like my new freezer cooking shirt. Got the uh, all inspired freezer cooking ponytail going. First cup of coffee, but we are getting through it. So last night, I did stay up and finish the last seven quarts of pears. I got my Walmart grocery order in, which I have my bags down here that I'll show you. I've got the few refrigerated items I only needed. It's like four Walmart bags worth of refrigerated items in the refrigerator. The rest of the stuff is non-perishable. It can stay out. I think I spent, and I'll look at my app to tell you 100%, I think I spent $199 on the odds and ends I needed to pull this freezer cooking off. But what I will do is in the big freezer cooking video where I cook all of these meals, which is coming up, I will put everything in my Walmart grocery pickup app and I'll just tell you what it would be to shop large family freezer meal pack 15, just from my local Walmart, what the costs come to. You know, I used to have to go out to the stores to do all that. So yay, I'll just show you on the app. It used to be years ago with my large family freezer cooking packs that I could get everything for $150 to $350 and have 40 meals or more. We'll just see how things have changed. And I've also certainly had times where I've gone out and done the shopping so I could bring it home and show it to you all and then cook it all up and give you a better visual. This time I'm shopping more from my pantry and freezers and stuff. So, so the only thing I didn't get done last night, which is kind of a big super mega thing, is I didn't get all the meat pulled out to start defrosting it and start cooking it. Again, I do give myself super mega grace. Maybe that's our next shirt. Super Mega Grace required or insert Super Mega Grace here. I didn't start my little cooking prep filming time until 8.30 last night and I got done all I could do. But it's okay, I have today. Today is Saturday and I can cook from now until the cows come home. So we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna go now, we're gonna pull the meat out. I also have stuff in the freeze dryer that we need to pull out and do that. Defro that was the other thing I didn't get done. It's like, what did I get done? But I know I did stuff. I know I didn't go to bed till one. I know I worked the whole time. Let's get going now on this day two of massive freezer meal prep. Okay, look at us. We are going down to the basement and doing basement things, yay. So here's my whole stack of things that I have been canning recently that we need to also get in on the canning shelves down here in my pantry room, but I have a, a teenager who's gonna do this for me at some point later later today, maybe not till this evening. But there it is, we've been doing it, and we will, one of their jobs is uh, to remove the rings for me and such. And uh, I guess I need to tell them this corn, I didn't, I didn't put, at least put the date. I mean, it's obviously corn, that's a nice thing with corn, but when we come down to applesauce, you know, it might be a bit of a mystery. So I did write that, what it is on the lid.
So I obviously hit a sale at my John Henry General store. They had the winter squash, basically a dollar a piece. They were three for three dollars. And then they also had these wonderful squashes, uh, same price. I mean, my goodness. So this should be okay for a bit for me down here. I do plan to chunk all of this up and can it. That'll be an upcoming canning project video. Then I have these freeze dried items. We need to get on our freeze dried shelves, but they're also pretty. And you know, I like to, I just like to see pretty things. So that's the peppers that we've done recently. We have other peppers. We're gonna go ahead and get in jars, do a defrost. Here's our other pans. That are, that are waiting. Here's some basil and, um, and some sage that I freeze dried the other day. So I'm just enjoying looking at these and this will be another too busy uh, doing it all right now to put it away, but we will have time for that. But I am going to put this other squash. Let's see, I might put those back there. I just want to see it. Can I stack them? Mm, that's kind of dangerous, kind of dangerous, okay but it's pretty, so I'm just gonna stack these here. Reason I'm taking them out of the bags now is we need these bags to bring up the meat and such. So the meat is the big thing. I'm gonna do cold water defrost method, get that going, and then I'll be able to do a variety of pressure cookers and roaster ovens and get that cooking down. And there's plenty to do to prep and get started while that meat is cooking. So it's continued freezer meal prep time. Tis, whoop, 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 oh, 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 oh. Are you okay? Okay, we didn't crack. <laughs> it didn't crack, yay. But these were definitely, I mean, these are lovely. And I know there's wonderful recipes. Instead of stuffed peppers, you can do stuffed squash, just yummy, yummy stuff. But I'm really thinking for the weight, these were the better value, even though three for a dollar of the other ones is also very nice, but I sent a teen to the store to get these for me the other day. I was like, go down to John Henry and get these squash. They'll have these like cash only, cash, cash and carry Wednesday and stuff. Like today I looked and they had all the gourds that you could carry for $5. And some days they'll do the things like all the pumpkins you can carry out of here for, you know, $5 or $3, but the thing is, you have to be able to carry them to your car, and whenever, if you drop one, well, like this. If you drop one, then you have to pay, you know, whatever regular price for the pumpkin, but I think their pumpkins are like $5 anyway. Oh, I did break one, shoot. But I'm excited, because I've heard from some other homesteading friends that at some point this fall, probably after Halloween, they will have these fill your truck for $10 type days, at least they have in other years. And so um, they go multiple times, shoot, I'm gonna need to put this one in the fridge. Um, they will go multiple times because they have a lot of farm animals also and just do truckloads of pumpkins and you know, maybe spend $30 and then their animals um, have a lot of good homegrown pumpkin to eat as well. So, I mean, it looks like things are happening here. That's good. Don't know. You know what? I could also do a bunch of meat in the 60 quart pot today. So we'll just, we'll see how inspiration takes me. Let's look for some chicken. Okay, so I'm looking in my large family freezer meal pack 15, and then I'm going through, 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 through. We have our shopping list. So I'm just looking at, and I just, I email myself these PDF files. So I need 18 pounds of chicken breast, 13 pounds of ground beef four 12 ounce packages of smoked sausage, six cups of cubed ham. I did go ahead and buy some of those cubed ham packs to make it easy. Uh, and then six pounds boneless skinless chicken thighs. Now if I don't have boneless skinless chicken thighs in my freezer, I'm just gonna use whatever chicken I have. It just gets back to how I had their recipe originally written. You just use whatever meat you have available. Okay, and then we go with other items from there. But that's the stuff I need to get out of my freezer right now, get it in cold water and get dealing with it. Some various sausages, not smoked sausage, but I'm gonna look at my recipe again. I might be able to just mix it up a bit. Again, using what I have. pretty good dent in that freezer though. I say later this month I have a whole hog coming and then in December a whole cow. 
but we're gonna cook through this and work it out. sausage so maybe that recipe is going to be a mix and then I have three different these oh these are different ones from Trader Joe's I actually was a I was I was actually in a town with the Trader Joe's and so I got some different things so we've got the sweet apple chicken sausage I did an apple and chicken sausage recipe over on TikTok people just went ballistic and I mean in the sense that they just thought I was some crazy person putting apples in my sausage and having sausage with chicken. And I'm like, that particular pack for that recipe, I got at Walmart. <laughs> so I'm not the inventor of apple infused chicken sausage, but it's really good. We have a sweet apple chicken sausage, a roasted garlic, and a sweet Italian. So again, I don't know how this is gonna go or what recipes off camera we're using them in, but I'm gonna go ahead and get them upstairs. I might find that some of this needs to come back downstairs. I know we needed 18 pounds total of chicken breast, just boneless, skinless, pulled chicken, basically. Um, some cubed, some diced, and then we needed another six pounds of chicken thighs, so I'm just gonna do an overall chicken mash. I also have these chicken thighs. I'm pretty sure these are bone in, but like the olden days, I mean, I could boil these up and peel them from the bone, and we got five pounds here. So eight, five, and then this is another four. And then I had, so that's about 17 pounds with these things. Of course, there's bones in these. And then I had, this was from one of those larger bag, bags of um, chicken from like a big bag like this. And I'm gonna say this is probably like three or four pounds, but it got a hole in it. There's a little bit of freezer burn, but I don't mind. Freezer burn won't actually like poison you and kill you. Uh, it can just change the taste. And so I can just cut that bit off and it would be fine. It, that chicken will be fine. So anyway, I probably need the equivalent of another five pounds of chicken to meet our chicken needs. And then for the sausages, I needed four 12 ounce packs of smoked sausage. So I have a mild Italian, that's 19 ounces. I have some bratwurst. We have these, we have one smoked sausage. So it just might be a variety of sausages in that meal. I'll tell you what that meal actually is when we get upstairs though. So let's go get the ground beef. Okay, so here's my old chest freezer. These towers of squash are gonna go into the freeze dryer. So that's gonna work, yay. We did, uh, spired up a whole um, what is it? Whole bushel, bushel of yellow squash. Okay, so I have some various, you know, oxtail, some various beef things in here, some pork. I'll put my camera down and dig for a minute. Alrighty, so I have four pounds woo, of organic chicken breast from Butcher Box that needs used up. It's almost, it's 3.63, so we'll, we'll say three and a half pounds or so. So then this is also from the half a cow we bought. I'm gonna say six months ago, it's been a bit, but um, I'm gonna try to get 13 of these. I don't know if we have 13 pounds of this ground beef left, but we'll get through it. And I know I have some ground turkey and also some ground sausage. So whatever I need ground beef for, we have ground meat. Oh, and I also have ground chicken. So we'll make it work. Okay, so I got about seven pounds in there. Pay no attention to that bag of broccoli. That's <laughs> some other like, we've got to eat in the meantime while mama's cooking. Alrighty, so I had four pounds of ground chicken. Also filled it in with some more ground turkey. I had gotten this on sale for $1.49 a pound a bit ago. So good to use this up. So here's two bags full that we need to get started. Yay, but plus some lunch for my kids right now, yay. So I need to run upstairs and get some of that stuff soaking for the cold water defrost method. But like these trays of baking sheets, I've been sharing about this in the last couple weeks. Like these strawberries, it was a whole huge flat for $5. So I flash freezed these on parchment paper and there's more of that bushel of squash. And the rest of the squash is over here. That's how that's worked out. And it's been wonderful. Like I'll just take a whole jar and dump it in um, various things that I've been making. 
So anyway, then we also still have our peppers. Now I know this is so thick, but they just break apart when I get working with it. And you'll see that when I get my next five pans ready for the freeze dryer, we're still gonna get that taken out. Um, anyway, you can see I'm getting comfortable stacking these trays once they're already frozen. I haven't had any issues doing that. And even for space-wise, if I need to stack this on top of this, I would just do another layer of parchment paper, but I'm getting ready to work with those peppers. And then again, these are all our tomatoes that we need to work with. So we're gonna head back so you're gonna come back upstairs with me right now. We're gonna get a lot of that meat, again, just in bowls in cold water because it will actually start to defrost enough where I can at least get it off the packaging. So that'll be helpful. That might take 30 or 40 minutes or so. Dump it out the water. I believe the guidelines for food safety is you dump out the water every 10 to 15 minutes and put fresh in. But in between that, we're getting in so many good steps today. We're doing all the things, yay. Between that, we need to come down here. I'm going to get my freezer space organized here to get ready for 40 freezer meals. Because again, I'm freezing lots of produce that I'm working through with the freeze dryer and also with canning. But I have room to move it around. Like especially, I just took two huge bags full of meat upstairs that need to be used. But I think I'm out of ground beef now. We're working through ground turkey. But that's all good because we're rolling through stuff. Yeah, so upstairs, then downstairs, and then up, down, up, down. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is my uh, real life mama shortcuts here. We have our chicken nuggets and some waffle fries. We also have some bananas and some apples that'll go with it. Both of these need to be cooked at 425. So I'm just gonna dump these on a pan, get these over here in the oven, then we'll get that meat in cold water. If I had a bunch of lunch freezer meals ready to go, I would have had that out for my kids. But anyway, this is just as easy to dump this on the pan and go from there. And again, I only have, well, two and a half kids home right now. Tobin's actually napping at this point. So this'll be Daniel, Benny, and then whoever else straggles. I have my, my nine-year-old, 11-year-old, 13-year-old, 16-year-old are at the air show. So here I am being a meal prepping mama and bananas. Okay, so looking at my recipes that we are prepping to cook up, it's a smoked sausage and broccoli casserole, so I think that is totally fine, subbing out a couple different sausages. And really, so it was the four 12 ounce packs. Again, I'm remembering my recipe, remembering doing this pack and everything, and it's the equivalent of one of those per pan. So since I'm doing four nine by 13s of that recipe, I could have like the chicken apple sausage in one and the mild Italian in another. I could mix it up that way. Well, we'll see, we'll see how inspiration strikes. And then the hearty beef and corn casserole. I mean, that can be done with ground chicken. That's fine. So I think all of our meat substitutions are fine, fine, fine. We are, we are doing, we're doing, of course, say the word large family 10 times fast for all these, but we've got a large family chicken pot pie casserole, large family ham and asparagus casserole, a big family Swedish meatball casserole. We're doing cheesy beef and rice casserole. So again, we might have our ground beef in that. We might end up, might be ground turkey. It might be a cheesy turkey and rice casserole. We're gonna taco macaroni casserole. So again, I just want you to be comfortable with switching out your meats any way you need to. And also, if you've heard my farmhouse grocery stories, back when I had a $250 a month grocery budget for feeding up to a family of seven, the only chicken that I bought was the leg quarter bags. They were under $5 for a bag. I think even these days they're six or $7 a bag. And I would get two to three of those and I would put all that chicken, I would run it through the stock pots, I would boil that chicken down. I would peel the chicken from the bones and then all of that was my shredded chicken for my chicken for the month. And then I would also have all of that broth that was made that I could use for various broccoli casseroles and doing different soups and such. So even though like this grocery list talks about using boneless skinless chicken breasts, boneless skinless chicken thighs, 
you just make the best with what you have available. All these recipes will work out fantastic. And even if you have less meat, you can use less meat or make any of these meatless that you would like. Alrighty, so this has nothing to do with today's freezer cooking extravaganza. I need some lunch. So I had one pack of stew meat from um, that pure and holy cow, as I like to joke. I'm gonna do this up in the Instant Pot. I'm gonna throw some seasonings in here in a minute too. And I'm gonna have this over some Kali rice. I will not eat all of this. It's probably a pound or so. But anyway, it's just a little mama meal prep, prepping ahead for later. Also, anyone in my family is more than welcome to have this stew meat and Kali rice with me. But we need to also feed the mama. And I have some broccoli that I'm gonna do. Let's see. Clear, clear, learn how to use my timer. So I'm just gonna get this going now also. Alrighty, so here are all three 30 quart bowls with some cold water and I mean the thing, the meat's already coming right off the packages and that's really all I need. We are gonna get out several pressure cookers for some of this. But right now I'm gonna return to the basement to do those other things, yay. Oh boy friends, this, this day was meant to happen. Of course I have my little side note stew meat thing happening there. But the pressure cookers are lined up. We are definitely gonna test out all of Travis's wonderful electrical. And for now, I just moved the bananas over there. So many of you have had the great suggestion of putting my fruit on the counter. Sorry, lunchtime here for the little critters. And obviously on big, when it's not a big project day, whenever that'll happen, we could certainly have the bananas here. But I think I'm just gonna keep the countertop or the island clear for today. Uh, so yay, let's get some meat going. I was gonna try to get some chicken going and go from there. I know I just said we're gonna run down to the basement, but before I do that, I wanna get this frozen chicken cooking in the pressure cookers. That can be something that's being completed while we're finishing in the freeze dryer and reorganizing one of my stand-up freezers. So I'm gonna do that. Let's get a towel and just carry this chicken over. I told the kids this morning, go through and get mama all the kitchen towels and all the kitchen washcloths because I need them. And now this uh, 14 quart Gunwise pressure cooker, I do have it linked in my Amazon shop, but many people have told me that it's just not available right now. So if you're interested in it at all, you just have to go look and see if it's available. So this is the three and three quarters, almost four pounds of chicken from Butcher Box. It's going in here. And this chicken was frozen in the packaging, so it definitely needed some cold water to frosting. This chicken didn't necessarily need that, but I mean, all this stuff was only in the water about five minutes. And even if it's edited out, please know that anytime I'm handling meat, I mean, I did used to be a nurse, so I do have hand washing ingrained in me. Even if you don't see it, I am washing my hands and I am sterilizing the countertop and washing off my scissors and cleaning, cleaning everything everywhere. So this will be about nine pounds of chicken. I'll see if I can fit some more in here too. And you can cook chicken from frozen in an electric pressure cooker. And I still need to add a cup of water. The other one, I'm gonna do the bone in chicken thighs. And I'm gonna do all of this chicken business while I have it all over me. So we're just gonna get the meat off of these chicken thighs here. Okay, Bobby. So yay, this is cooking our chicken for our freezer meals. Looking at the non-perishable items, oh my goodness, the wall of noodles, but we have a meatball casserole that has egg noodles, and then we have like a beef and corn, which for ours it might be like a chicken and corn. It has these kind of noodles. And we are doing at least eight of those casseroles. Plus, in my recipe pack, it talks about getting, I think it was, um, again, I'm not looking at it right here in front of me, but it was like 12 16 ounce bags. Well, these are only 12 ounce bags. So I tried to get enough 
for today with the 12 ounce bags, but I probably will end up with, we'll say about four or so of these extra, which is fine because I can use them later. So these are the noodles and then we got some onions some French onions, and then I have a few things in the refrigerator. And then I have the rest of the items, like the, this is the diced ham that I'll use a lot in freezer meals. I needed some Swiss cheese. What do we have here? Some the meatballs, some spinach. I know we have mushrooms up here, the asparagus. So again, the odds and ends that I needed. Okay, so I forgot that I had a whole other pack of chicken thighs. This is, 8.7 pounds, almost nine pounds of chicken thighs. My little bit of stew meat I was cooking finished in this one, so I'm gonna get those chicken thighs going. And then we will officially, officially have a trio of pots working for us, prepping our freezer meal meat. Okay, so for my variety of sausages that I had in my freezer that I'm using up, I'm going to just put them on a baking sheet and get them in, an oven, in the oven. And then these various ground beef, I was thinking of using the roaster oven, and I mean, that's certainly helpful, and I've thrown like 25 pounds of ground beef in the roaster oven and done it that way. I think with this, I'm just gonna use my 17 inch Lodge cast iron pan and do it on the stove top. I think that's what we're gonna do here. And I may have to end up getting both out. Ah, uh, now I'm like, oh, maybe I should just throw it in the roaster. Uh, okay, jury's still out with that, but I'm going to get these in the oven. Okay, so I got all the ground various meats, the turkey, the chicken, and the beef going in this roaster oven. And then I got our variety of sausages. Anyway, so all of these sausages are already pre-cooked, so I'm just cooking them through again now, and then we will get those sliced up and ready for those meals. Okay, so I'm gonna mess with my hot tea and mess with these cold freezers. These were just shoved in random freezers from our Azure order when I had people who live here carry down items, but they don't need to be in these freezers like this in these boxes. So I'm gonna move them out of here. Also, these are my favorite sprouted English muffins. You can get those at Walmart too, but it's nice to just get a case from Azure. two boxes of popsicles, there you go. So the element of organization, believe it or not, that has occurred is my seven cubic feet chest freezers. And yes, there's flies down here. It's just country living, right? I just felt one jump off my head. <laughs> I have one of them that's a dedicated vegetable freezer. And then like these two just got mixed up with all kinds of random like freezer meals and pork loin and just everything jumbled together. So what I used to have and what now that I have this set up in this space again, I wanna have a dedicated freezer meal freezer. Now, there's going to be some other freezer dances that are happening. My three seven cubic feet chest freezers. I'm giving those away to three different families that I know in my area that would like an extra freezer. I'm going to be replacing those with another one of these stand up freezers. And I need to continue to work through the various odds and ends that are in this loaded freezer to make more freezer meals. Also, we have harvest things that need to be processed. But still here, there's like two packages of pork, maybe three packages of salmon, 
there's probably, I'm looking at five slow cooker freezer meals, so I probably need to move them to the other freezer. But for what we're doing today, I wanted to get this back to being a dedicated, already prepped and ready to go freezer meal freezer. Like right here, I did these with my, like the other day, I did these meatloaf freezer meals, doing some meal prep with my membership community, if you can hear me over there. And so I'll just put those in that bin, and then I'll move my other slow cooker freezer meals into here too. Between all these bins. Woo. And then all of my cans of freezer meals can go on these shelves. and then 12 if I count the four barbecue meatloaves. So that's fantastic. And by the end of the massive freezer cooking, we'll have so many beautiful things happening on these shelves. So lots of prep has been going down. I was hoping I still had some 9 by 13 pans, and I did have this box that I bought in bulk, and I bought this in 2021. You know, I'm just looking at the address, or a YouTube viewer sent these to me. I just know that I've had these in my basement for a while. I know I have bought pans in bulk, and then I'm looking at the address this came to, and I'm thinking, no, one of you all might have sent these to me. So here they are. You know, I like to use by glass baking cans. I have a collection of nine by 13. And I also have, I think I have 20 total, and about half of them are nine by 13 glass pans. Some are Pyrex and some are this um, Anchor Hawking brand. And then I also have a collection of Pyrex that's the 10 by 15 or 18 pans. So these recipes are for nine by 13 pans. But I was thinking if I couldn't find this stash of metal pans that I had, that I might use my 10 by 15. You know I always end up cooking Mega and Lots, even extra Mega and Lots when I'm already cooking Mega and Lots. So I was gonna use my 10 by 18 or whatever those pans are. But I have these, they're a little deeper, but they'll cook up just fine. I'm going to wash these though, put them in the sink just with a little Dawn and soapy water and rinse them. I do that like whenever I get nine by 13 pans at Walmart. These are convenient because whenever I'm giving meals to other families, whatever might happen. Situations come up all the time. I could hear this family has a son who had an unexpected surgery and now they're at the hospital and other kids are at home and there's just a whole big situation. Well, when I have all these meals made, I'm making them with my family in mind, but when I hear that, okay, I'll go grab three meals and we can drop those off at their house with some sides and there you go, they're ready, ready to go for sharing. I have also given meals in my glass dishes and I have always gotten those back. But this just makes that a little easier as well.
Alrighty, so pans are washed and dried. We got our ground meats in there. We got these mushrooms, asparagus, celery. Oh, but look, look at those onions. That amazing dicer right there does those onions. I know, you are so proud. Anyway, I also have my glass pans. What do we got here? Two, four, six, seven of those. The rest will be the aluminum pans. The Mega Mama bowls are ready to go. I brought up a bucket of white rice from food storage. And then I have a variety of pantry items that I've pulled together for these meals. And then I have things such as mixed vegetables. And also I've got some probiotic sour cream this time. I got something popping at me in the microwave. I got that, it's the Nancy Sour Cream from Azure Standard. I'm out of my great value black beans and you know I've been canning black beans now. I have canned 25 quarts of beans, I know. So I'm gonna bring up four jars of those. And then, besides the meat that's already done, I have some refrigerator items here in my big Mega Mama refrigerator waiting to make their appearance. So we're doing it. You have massive meal prepped with me. All the stuff is ready. I'm ready to be let loose and make these 40 large family freezer meals now. And you see, it's dark. So it's gonna be some late evening freezer cooking, but I feel like we are so possibly prepped and ready to go. We are gonna make this happen. So be sure to subscribe if you are not subscribed already. Be on the lookout for the very next video following this one. And we are going to fill these pans and those pans and those bowls and all the things. All the mega massive large family freezer meals are coming your way and we're doing it, yay! I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye bye. Yes and I, yeah, yes and amen, it's all gonna work.